So find a posture, nitty and ease. Your chin slightly down, your crown raised. Your shoulders back and your chest open. And when you're ready, you can gently close your eyes if you wish. Take a few deep, deep breaths of energy. And do that with a feeling of just letting go and a feeling of acceptance for yourself, how you are right now, and a feeling of deep love for yourself as well. And then when you're ready, fall into a rhythm and a depth of breathing that works best for your body and your mind and your spirit in this particular moment. The incoming breath and the outgoing breath. The length of this meditation session is the length of just one breath. The practice of meditation is just one breath long, and then we begin again, begin again. And notice the body starting from the crown of the head. Notice anything you feel. Or if you don't feel, notice that. And then move your attention gently down to your forehead. And let tension melt away like warm butter and let the energy flow around your eyes and between your eyes, letting go of any tension around your nose, your mouth. Notice where your tongue is in relationship to the teeth. Relax your jaw down to your neck. And then move your attention down to your shoulders, relaxing and releasing and letting the energy flow down through your upper arms, your biceps, your triceps, your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, your hands, all the way down to your fingertips. Feel your energy, feel your oxygenated blood replenishing and nourishing. And then start at the back of your neck and let go of any tension there as you Lower your chin just a little bit more and lift the crown a little higher so your neck is nice and straight and relaxed. And let go of any tension in the upper back, the middle of the back. Let your life force, your breath energy move down through your lower back, releasing any tension all the way down through your hips. Feel the weight of your body on your chair or your bed or your cushion or the floor releasing any tension around your hamstrings, your quadriceps, your thighs are relaxed, moving down through your knees, letting go of any tension down through your calves, your ankles, your feet, all the way down to the tips of your toes. Feel your life force between your toes and at the tips of your toes. And then begin at the base of your throat. Let go of any tension anywhere in that area. And then just open out your chest if it's not already open. And just relax and feel your life force moving down through your chest, all the way deep inside to your beating heart. Letting go of any tension 
around your rib cage or your abdomen. And now your body is in a state of deep relaxation and awareness. And now just return to the breath. Notice where you feel it in the body, the incoming breath and the outgoing breath. Notice a sense of wakefulness, clarity, a brightness of the mind. Awake to an in-breath. Awake to an out-breath. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, let them come and let them go like gray clouds against the blue sky of your awareness. And then gently and firmly invite the mind back to the breath each time. The moment you notice your mind is gone, that means you're already back. Take a deep breath of energy to reward yourself for some work well done. This moment, this breath, this sensation, this body, this is a moment of wakefulness. This is your practice. Take a few more deep, deep breaths of energy And do so with a feeling of deep love for yourself and a feeling of letting go and spread that love and acceptance all the way out to the darkest edges of the universe and then right back to you filled with light. I love you. Your family loves you. Your teachers love you. Your friends love you. We all love you. And as Celsine says, love yourself even more than that. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. What a peculiar and particular moment I had been thinking. But I'm reminded that We've been through these things before, and I remember how strong you are and how strong your families are. Not but a moment ago, Ms. Knowlton and I were interviewing an amazing woman who, like people of the Bible, had crossed through the desert, this time the Sonoran Desert. And it took her one month because she wanted something better for herself and her family. And I thought about, and we talked a bit about how she was able to do this, what made it possible. And she talked about being from the state of Guerrero, the warrior state. And she also mentioned that she spoke three languages. Her English was wonderful. Her Spanish was fluent. But she also spoke Huasteca Nahual. Huasteco Nahual. Huasteco. It sounds, for people who haven't heard it, maybe it sounds like what it is, which is Aztec. Huasteco Nahual a language of warriors. And so listening to her, it's like, well, I'm amazed that you did that, but you come from very strong stock. Um, And, you know, so many of our families have passed through that ordeal of the desert. Um, And 
And I realized that every group of people, all of us, we wouldn't be here except for the fact that we passed through things much tougher than what we're experiencing now. I never want to minimize other people's suffering. I'm comfortable minimizing whatever I, I in the moment feel is my own, but your families, you, your ancestors have passed through much tougher things. Whether it's famines in Ireland, pogroms in Eastern Europe, the Middle Passage, every single person here, there have not just been one moment um, marked in history, there have been numerous moments unmarked by word or pen uh, that people have passed through to get to this moment where here we are looking at each other in rectangle boxes on this magnificent screen that sends forth fear and hate, but also brings us together today as a community and reminds us of who we are and the great promise that's ahead of us. I'm in about 15 minutes. I, I could go on a bit longer. Maybe I will. Um, most of you have heard of the Trojan War. Um, and, and some of you have read the, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And I was looking at uh, a book that was written hundreds and hundreds of years ago called the Aeneid, originally written in Latin. Um, and this is a translation by Stanley Lombardo. And he talked about, uh, the, the Aeneid talks about Aeneas, the hero of our story, much like the hero, hero of our story uh, that Ms. Knowlton and I heard, you know, and so many of your parents are heroes of our story. That's why we're here in this game. But he fought a battle uh, in Troy, trying to defend his homeland. And then, um, then they were defeated. And, uh, um, I just got, a, sorry, I just got a text from Vanessa saying she couldn't get on Zoom, um, but you all will just tell her. And, and, and listen, forget everything I told you. It, the, what I say uh, is, is, is easily forgotten, but remember how we feel together, together, that we really are a family and that your teachers have done an amazing job and you, your families, by holding this all together uh, via the internet. Um, but he talks at, you know, the story of Aeneas is that he, he loses his wife in the war. He carries his father, who is crippled and old, on his back through the flames and past Greek soldiers that were pillaging uh, his homeland, and he had to leave. And, you know, the story of Aeneas is that, you know, he endured seven years and then he made himself a home. I mean, this is what so many of your families, all of your families have done in one way or another, and your teachers too. I mean, we made a home here in the United States for, for, for what it's worth, but we've also made a home together here in Spanish Harlem. So we are strong. Even if I could, and even if I wanted to tell you that Things will soon get better. They may not. They may get a bit worse. We may get a second wave of a pandemic. Um, the economy may sputter and sink for a while. It will get better in time, but it may take a while. But I feel okay about it. And you should feel okay about it too, because you've trained as warriors. You come from the strong stock of warriors, but you also have these methods that we've taught you here at the school. Um, you know, so I read the Aeneid and I went to uh, a book written by this guy Montaigne who lived in France back in the 1600s. And he talked about what a good education was. And he talked about basically the responsibility of the teachers is to make you struggle and suffer. I'm sure many of you have wanted to quit during some of the exercises or the sprints or the laps or during games, and you pushed through and you endured. 
Your coaches reminded you that you're stronger than you thought you had been. So you're ready for whatever comes. I mean, you've already proven it. Your, your teachers have sung your praises every Friday we get together and they tell me how wonderful you are. I've just started to see you uh, seventh graders every Friday in our virtual advisory. And I was telling the teachers that everything they said is true, that you look strong, determined, maybe a little sad, but that's okay. That means we're growing up. Um, uh, and you're enduring and you will endure and it's but it's not just a question of of endurance it's also a question of having wise guides like Montaigne talks about back in 15th century France uh, it's not just about endurance like we hear told in the Aeneid by Virgil or Homer in the Odyssey, but it's also about community and love. So you have persistence, you have endurance, but you also have our compassion, you have the support of a strong institution that's with you. Many of you came in, it thrilled me, many of you came in to, to get laptops and those were given by the school. When I say the school, the school extends all the way from coast to coast and a supporter in Chicago, a suburb of Chicago said, might some families need computers? And then 48 hours later, they're on the first thing smoking out East and your wonderful teachers came and handed them out. Um, I see some of you on Mondays when um, your teachers, your, your, my dear colleagues, at some risk and, and, uh, and, and some inconvenience um, come and because they honor the strength and dignity of your families, we have the honor of, of sharing food. Um, you know, your parents have shared with us their most precious possession, their most precious responsibility, you. And so now we have the opportunity in a small way, and it's just a small gesture, once a week to return the favor and say how grateful we are that we've joined your family and you've joined our family. Uh, yeah, I wish I could see your faces. Um, yeah, I just see my my grill looking back at me. You know, actually, I, I look pretty good to myself right now because um, I'm in just a tiny little rectangle and I'm not wearing my glasses. But um, but when I've seen you guys, I do look closely, and you look full of resolve and and uh, confidence. And make so make sure beyond the endurance um, and the compassion. Um, Make sure that, make sure that uh, you have moments of joy and laughter. And I think you're doing that. But it's, it's really important. These things, all this stuff is happening too. And I think it's really, um, in some ways, if we're going through an ordeal like this, and many of your families have seen worse, it's pretty amazing that it's happening in the time, around the time of, of Passover, which is a commemoration of, of people living in bondage and enduring. And it, right after Lent, where people fast uh, before uh, the period of Easter, which commemorates the suffering of, of humans taken on by, uh, by God. And now Ramadan, uh, where people fast and do so in submission and also in compassion, realizing that in the choice to fast, other people don't have that, that choice. Um, so, uh, you, you know, it's, it's, a special, uh, it's a special moment. You know, one of the things that, uh, that I think about when I think about wrestling is um, a story from the Old Testament of Jacob. And, and I'm coming to the end of my remarks and reflections. <laughs> Um, you know, Jacob was a great warrior, warrior of the desert. Um, and uh, like your parents, we were warriors walking through the desert. And Jacob was alone. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. 
So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. I mean, we've all been marked by this moment. You all have been marked by this moment, just like Jacob was marked by his struggle and his suffering. It what, it's what gives you, your parents, this dignity and this strength that makes them warriors and that makes you warriors. So all of you who are passing through this moment as children, you're gonna be different and special in a way that other people were experiencing as adults will not be touched. So you're gonna walk out of this just like like Jacob did, you're gonna have a bit of a limp. There's been some suffering, but you're stronger for this. Um, even now, and I see it in your eyes every time we get together Friday. So may you be happy, may you look after yourself with ease, may you be free from suffering, may you be free from trouble, may you be free from oppression, may you and your families look after yourselves with ease. We're here for you for as long as you need us to be, you know, certainly um, for my last breath and, 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 you know, ideally that would be a long time from now. Um, but it's important to remember the breath. Remember to meditate, just give yourself, we started with that, we'll end with this. Give yourself just a few minutes. Don't make it more than it is. Um, you know, another warrior, um, a person named Marcus Aurelius said this about meditation. And this is funny because, you know, some of the people, you know, I, we took, Courtney and I talked to this other woman who, and this is, this is we know what your, your parents are going through. Uh, this is an amazing woman uh, of warrior stock, of, of, of warriors from antiquity, uh, from, from deep in the heart of Mexico. She did what a lot of your families have done, what my grandfather ended his days doing, cleaning up after other people. These people, went to the Hamptons, this fancy place out in the end of Long Island, and they stopped paying her. I mean, just crazy. And, and, and you know, we only heard about it because we were asking, asking her about her life and how she was doing. And, you know, people are tough um, and strong. And, you know, I take, took her into my meditation. I take her into my remarks today. Another warrior, Marcus Aurelius, who lived hundreds and hundreds of years ago, a great warm Roman warrior and emperor, talked about meditation. They talked about this, with pe basically people going out to the Hamptons, what passed through the Hamptons in Italy. People try to get away from it, to the country, to the beach, and the Hamptons are on the beach, to the mountains. And he's saying this because he's in the middle of, of a war, a struggle, just like we are. And he says, you wish that you could too. You wish you could get away to the beach, to your, to your mountain house. And he's talking to himself. He's saying, Marcus, you wish you could do it too. And he's telling himself he's an idiot. He said, this is idiotic. He said, all you need to do, all you need to do is to get away anytime you want to by going within. Nowhere you can go is more peaceful, more free of interruptions than your own soul, especially if you have other things to rely on, like your training, like your breath work, like your exercise, like the books that you read. An instant remembrance of who you are and your training, and there it is, complete tranquility. And by tranquility, I mean a kind of serenity, serenity and virtue. So um, we're gonna, you're gonna turn on your camera so we can, uh, I can actually see you. Um, and uh, it, it's, you know, it, we're here for you. Um, you have my phone number, uh, don't abuse it, but uh, you've got my email, phone number, you've got the teacher's numbers, and it's great to see you. I don't know when we'll do our next whole school time, but, uh, I see my, my dear colleague, Mr. Rawitz, and I see Zanai and Tracy um, and Hannah. 
I miss Ms. Leverance. They we all have first names. I see Renata and her dad and Adalberto and his dad. It's it's a beautiful family uh, family that we have here. So she gets solid and her family. Um, what 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 a joy it is to see you. We love you so much. Um, your your teachers and your administrators are amazing. Ms. Duncan and Ms. Knowlton are strong warriors. We talk every day planning to give you so I see Valerie who wrote the definitive poem on, on being warriors, which is still an inspiration for all of it. I see Abigail and her family and uh, the Arias family. I see Stephanie there and uh, um, I see James and Catherine. I could go on and on and on, but what I see Jocelyn. Hey, baby, be nice to Jocelyn. She loves you very much. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll sign off whenever you feel ready, but, but we're here from you. We're strong. We're the guerreros. We're the warriors and, uh, nothing, nothing is stronger than our love and determination. And, um, you know, we're here for you and we'll get through this, uh, just like we have already. Um, and you, you have no idea, or maybe you do now how much your teachers love you and the school is being stronger for this. So, um, I, I want to go on endlessly, but I know you've got things to do. Um, maybe we'll see you next week. I hope so. But what a joy, what a pleasure it is to see you in the embrace of your families. And, uh, you know, I didn't know it was possible, but seeing you now um, and hearing about you, the teachers, I really love you, uh, love you even more than, than I ever have. But it's a warrior's love. We're going to place demands on each other and get stronger through this. So. God bless, I carry you in my thoughts, my prayers, my meditations, and um, your families are strong, you're strong, and, and we're gonna be stronger for this. God bless and bye-bye. And Hi, Scotty. I can't hear you. <laughs>